What is up guys and welcome to another crack a pack episode today we're opening up a pack of 8th edition core set this is really really exciting I love opening up these old core sets uh, of course we're going to look through this as if it's a limited perspective uh, so we'll do the best we can to figure out what our pack one pick one would be uh, if I can get the pack open of course this is a core set we should keep that in mind so things are going to be a little bit less power level uh, hungry for sure and it looks like we had a black bordered card which does mean we have a foil in here so we'll see what we get Grizzly Bears is our first card. It's a 2-2 vanilla creature for one and a green. This is a perfectly on-curve 2-drop. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. Not a reason to be in a particular color, but if you are in green and you need some 2-drops, this is the perfect prime card that you would want. Uh, Severed Legion is a 2-2 for one and two black. It does have fear, so it can't be blocked by uh, any creatures except by artifact creatures and or black creatures. Uh, so it's just an evasive 2-2. Two, uh, two -two. Uh, for three, which is actually okay. I'm kind of okay with that. Uh, artifact creatures are probably not going to be very prominent in general. Black creatures are obviously going to be prominent in a deck where they're running black, but obviously that's not going to be the case every time. And so sometimes this could just be an unblockable 2-2 two -two for three. For that reason, I like it above the Grizzly Bears for sure. A little bit more difficult to cast, but definitely worth it. Aven Flock is a 2-3 for 4 and a white. It does have flying. And then you can pay a white and it gets plus 0, plus 1 until the end of the turn. Excuse me. Uh, that does just mean that it's going to be very difficult to kill. Uh, but it's not really that great of a, a 5 drop, to be honest. It invests a lot of mana long term. Uh, and for 5 mana, you're only getting a 2-3. That seems pretty bad for me. Uh, I think I would much rather have the Severed Legion. Honestly, it's actually more evasive in my opinion. Uh, and so I don't think I'm stoked on the uh, Avon Flog there by any means. Uh, Boldovian Barbarians is a 3-2 vanilla creature for 1 and 2 red. Again, this is pretty much what you would expect in a core set at this time. <clears throat> for 3 mana, you're getting, you're getting excuse me, uh, a 3-2. No real abilities of any kind, but uh, it serves the curve, and that's really what you need to do with cards like this. <clears throat> that's really the only reason to take vanilla creatures, uh, but in a core set, you're going to be more oftentimes with a lot of vanilla creatures uh, over a regular expansion set. So, perfectly fine. Not super exciting. Definitely would rather have the Legion. <laughs> Uh, Mana Leak is an instant for one in a blue target creature or counter, excuse me, target spell unless its controller pays three. This is just a perfectly serviceable counter spell. Uh, I tend to focus more on hard counters and limited uh, because you don't know when you'll be drawing this. And if it's late in the game, probably isn't going to matter quite as much. But this is a pretty big counter for three. You're going to have to pay three if you're going to get around this counter. And that's actually a lot. That means it's going to be applicable throughout the majority of the game for sure. Uh, and so I do like it. I think I'd rather have the creature in Severed Legion, uh, but it's perfectly fine. I would, if I'm in a blue deck, this is a perfectly good card. Uh, Bog Imp is a 1-1 one, one flyer for one and a black. This is actually a pretty classic card in my opinion. I used to play with this a lot in 7th edition. Uh, same art too, which is really cool. But uh, it is just an okay 2-drop. Uh, it's a flyer, so it's evasive. I like that. Uh, you could definitely theoretically just pack a deck full of evasive cards and be able to win that way. That's kind of what blue-white flyers just is. Uh, and so cards like this are fine. This and Severed Legion together are fine. Uh, I'd rather have the Severed Legion. It's a little bit more power. Uh, and honestly, I do think it's a little more evasive. Again, it depends on the deck you're against. It's going to be worse against black decks, but uh, it's honestly just an okay three drop. So I'd rather have that over the bog imp. Uh, Canopy Spider is a 1-3 uh, for one and a green. It can block as though it had flying. Now this is an interesting pick. I think uh, potentially I would take this over the Legion. I'm not 100% sure. I think the Legion is more aggressive. Uh, this is much more of a blocker. Uh, obviously not much more power. Uh, one is pretty low, but uh, three toughness at two is pretty good. Uh, so you're going to be able to block a lot of things like Bog Imps and things like that. It's going to stave off a lot of in-air attacks. I like it for that reason, but I think I'd rather, I'd prefer to go aggressive with the Legion for sure. Uh, this is just a good card in a green deck for sure. Uh, Sage Owl is a 1-1 one, one for 1 and a blue. It does have flying, and when it comes into play, look at the top four cards of your library and then put them back in any order. I actually really like this, uh, especially over something like the Bog Imp because it tailors the top of your deck to whatever you need. Obviously, 
you're focused on only those four cards. You cannot move those uh, anywhere else in your deck, but you can order them in such a way that it's going to most often benefit you. I like that. It's also just a 1-1 flyer for two, so it's evasive uh, and early game, which I like as well. I think I would take this over the Legion solely for that top deck manipulation, uh, but in general, they're kind of on par with each other, I think, uh, but I just prefer stuff like that. Uh, Shatter is a classic card. Instant for one and a red. Destroy target artifact. Very straightforward card. One that you would only want in sideboard, not main board. This is not an artifact focused set. Uh, and so for that reason, this is not a main boardable card, but uh, you do want access to it. If you're in red, destroying artifacts, destroying enchantments, things like that, you want all of those effects to be available to you in your sideboard for sure. Uh, so if you're in red, take it. If you're not already in red, I would not take this as a reason to be in red for sure. Solidarity is an instant for three and a white. Creatures you control get plus zero, plus five until the end of the turn. I really don't like this card. Power or a boost to toughness is not something I'm ever really interested in. A uh, boost to power, certainly, especially anthem effects like this that hit every creature you control. But uh, unfortunately, the power on, on the, the added stuff to the toughness uh, is really not that good. It comes into play only when you're blocking, uh, and that's just not ideal in my opinion. <coughs> Invisibility is an enchant creature for two blue. It, the enchanted creature can't be blocked except by walls. Most often that'll basically mean that it's unblockable, which I do like, uh, but it doesn't mean they can't just straight up destroy it with a kill spell or a burn spell. And so for that reason, I'm not super stoked about a card like this, unless I have something that maybe t goes in tandem with it. So anytime it deals damage, it gets a bonus. That kind of thing I like, but uh, in general, not super stoked on this card for sure. <coughs> Slay is an instant for two and a black destroy target green creature. It can't be regenerated and then you draw a card. This is super, super good if you're against green. It is absolutely useless if it's not against green. Uh, and so for that reason, this is unfortunately delegated to sideboard. It's very efficient kill uh, for being up against a green deck. And I would definitely want it if I'm in black just to have access to it as sideboard. But Unfortunately, a lot of cards at this time were very specific in what they did uh, and to what colors in particular. And so this is just an, a, a side effect of that. <coughs> uh, Lesser Gargadon is a 6-4 for 2-2 two and two red. Uh, when it attacks or blocks, you do have to sacrifice a land. That being said, this is very, very powerful. Uh, I would absolutely want this in a red deck because it comes out on turn 4 and it's already a 6-4. Uh, honestly... Four mana is kind of the peak of a red deck anyway, four or five maybe. Uh, and so I don't care that much that I'm sacrificing lands. I think by that point, I'd like to be able to finish up the game pretty quickly. This just definitely seems like a really good finisher for that. And so, so far, that's definitely the pick. <coughs> uh, our rare is Phyrexian Plague Lord. It's a four, four for three and two black. You can tap it and sacrifice it. Target creature gets minus four, minus four until the end of the turn or you can sacrifice a creature and target creature gets minus one, minus one until the end of the turn. Uh, this is, I think, definitely the pick so far. Uh, this is just a very powerful card, being able to pick off a bunch of other creatures by sacrificing your own. Obviously not something that you want to do necessarily, but it is definitely a means to an end, being able to deal with all the opponent's creatures and at least have an onboard way to deal with them at any time. That's fantastic, so definitely interested in this over the Lesser Gargadon, though this is a little bit lower on the power toughness scale. It's definitely worth it. Uh, and then we did get a Foil Swamp here. Uh, obviously not going to be the pick, but very beautiful. I think for me, it's definitely the Plague Lord. The Lesser Gargadon, very powerful, but the Plague Lord just lets you deal with so much stuff on board uh, that I do think it's more worth it. Feel free to disagree in the comment section below, as always, but... If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack video.